Hello, in this podcast we will discuss about how to detect and protect yourself from financial fraud. But before that if you want to read full article about it then the link of the article is in description. Also you can subscribe to our YouTube channel Monist View. According to the Reserve Bank of India, during 2020 to 2021, 229 financial frauds were reported on average every day in India. Moreover, as a result of these frauds, Rs 1.38 lakh crore was siphoned out of the bank accounts of the fraud victims. It is clear that financial scammers are hard at work and they have been quite successful in being able to con people out of their hard-earned money. Financial fraudsters are highly intelligent and adaptive criminals so they employ a range of sophisticated and effective tactics to dupe people. Let's take a closer look at some some of these tactics so that you can identify a potential fraud. 1. Benefits that sound too good to be true In an earlier section, we mentioned the 3% per day return promised by the fake cryptocurrency Morris coin. Now assuming simple interest return of 3% per day return. If you stay invested for a year, your Morris coin would have grown 10 times. This brings to mind an old English proverb if something seems too good to be true, then it probably is. In fact, fraudsters spend a significant amount of time and effort to convince people that the high returns they are offering are guaranteed. So, when you see words like guaranteed high returns, take a step back and figure out if the benefits or returns being offered are in fact, too good to be true. 2. Promise of exclusive privileges and freebies A number of products and services including financial products like credit cards come with exclusive privileges and freebies often as part of introductory offers or membership subscriptions. While many of these offers are legitimate if offered by a well-known company, fraudsters often use the lure of such privileges and freebies to fool individuals. For example, a real estate agent might offer you a plot of land at rupees, 4,000 per square feet and guarantee that if you invest right now, you can easily sell it in three months at rupees, 6,000 per square feet and turn a profit. Other scam artists have been known to offer free seminars, free lunch, or a discounted travel package to the person being scammed. The idea is that most people would reciprocate by making a larger commitment. So, beware of these types of privileges or freebies that are part of a limited time offer. Instead, do your homework to determine if a particular investment is legitimate and suits your financial goals. 3. Investment offers received from unknown people A number of financial frauds in India occur over the phone or via email with scam artists leveraging technology to siphon money out of the bank accounts of unsuspecting individuals. Some red flags that you need to look out for in case you receive a call or email from unknown individuals offering investment opportunities are a lofty promises such as high guaranteed returns. Be the insistence for a quick decision to avail the exclusive limited time offer. See statements like everyone else is buying, investing. D vague information regarding the opportunity and no additional contact information. If you see any of these red flags, it is best to stay away from such investment opportunities so that you can protect your hard-earned money. 4. Lack of verifiable documentation Another red flag that can help you identify a potential fraud is the use of documentation that you cannot verify or cross-check from other sources. A few fraudsters have been known to provide documentation like fraudulent account statements, misleading promotional material, hand-delivered notices regarding investment performance, etc. to support the promised performance of their schemes. The objective of such incorrect documentation is to ensure that the person being defrauded does not physically visit the branch office, check his, her account statement online or ask questions about how the investment is performing. This type of scam is often targeted at senior citizens who might have a limited understanding of how their accounts can be operated online or are unable to visit a branch due to health reasons. So, if your parents have a financial advisor, do take some time to periodically check their accounts so that you can identify red flags like unauthorized withdrawals from the account, the accounts closed with penalty payments due to any reason, see changes in risk tolerance of their investment portfolio, the unusual or unexplained banking transactions, etc. Staying on the lookout for these red flags can help your near and dear ones avoid financial fraud and a lot of future worries. Now let's discuss how to protect yourself from fraud before it happens. The old proverb prevention is better than cure holds true for various aspects of our life including being the victim of a financial scam. While the government and liability insurance programs do their part in helping victims of financial fraud, it is definitely better if you can prevent from being a victim of such scams in the first place. Here are some steps that you can take to minimize your risk of becoming a victim of fraud. 1. Trust but verify. 
Many of us have a trusted individual who has been providing us with financial advice or selling financial products to family members for years. Even then, it is a good idea to ensure that this broker, insurance agent or financial advisor is legitimate. I licensed and registered with the appropriate authorities. For example, consider at Money, the registered entity that offers NPS, insurance products, direct mutual funds under the at Money brand is Banyan Tree Services Limited. Banyan Tree is an authorized provider of various financial services because it has 1. Valid SEBI registration number is a registered investment advisor. 2. Valid ARN registration number from Association of Mutual Funds in India. 3. Registered with IRDAI as a corporate agent for selling insurance policies. And 4. Valid PFRDA registration as a point of presence for national pension system. As an investor, it is good practice to verify all appropriate credentials and the process to check these credentials is easily accessible online. All you need to do is go to the website of SEBI, AMFI, IRDAI or PFRDA website to check if the registration number of a specific company or individual providing financial services is valid. 2. Avoid chasing unrealistically high returns. Over the years, a number of financial frauds have been successful simply because people were lured with the promise of unrealistically high returns like 3% per day, 5% per day, etc. While in many cases, the criminals have been caught by the police, these scams have cost potential investors crores of rupees. In order to protect yourself from being lured by such empty promises you should. 1. Adopt the mindset that there is no such thing as easy money. 2. Never invest without understanding how the investment actually works. 3. Don't be a victim of FOMO. You need not invest just because everyone else is. 4. In case you are suspicious, do not hesitate in contacting the supervising entity. What's more do not make the investment till you receive a satisfactory reply to such a query. 3. Control your behavior and biases. Our own behavior and biases are often the reason why we fall victim to financial fraud in the first place. Some of the common investors' biases include our desire to be adventurous, the need to be correct every time and even the desire to get rich quickly. Then there is also the fear of missing out and willingness to reciprocate to freebies that you might have received from someone. What's more we tend to support these wants and needs by making assumptions. For example we might assume something is genuine simply because it is endorsed by a celebrity. Or because a salesperson has visited your home instead of you needing to visit an office. You might want to buy something that he is selling. These are in fact common tactics that fraudsters use to con you out of your hard-earned money. So, do not let your own behavior and biases impact your ability to recognize potential financial frauds. 4. Do not stop learning. You should never stop learning about the working of financial products. These days you can easily access a variety of online and even offline resources to stay updated regarding the latest trend in financial products. As your understanding of various financial instruments increases, it will become easier for you to identify the tactics utilized by potential fraudsters. However, be careful when choosing your source of financial knowledge because many fraudsters use platforms like social media to spread misinformation and dupe individuals. Five, Maintain the confidentiality of your financial information. While this is probably the easiest way to not get defrauded out of your money, it might not always be the easiest to implement. To ensure this, you should never share your username, banking login information, password, OTP, etc. with anyone including people you might know. Beyond this, be careful about sharing documents like your PAN and ADHAR. In case you need to share copies of these documents, make sure you mark them as self-attested along with the purpose for providing the copies. Additionally, never share a blank white paper with your signature or a blank check with anyone, no matter how trustworthy the individual is. Now let understand what is bottom line in this podcast. The instance of financial frauds in India as well as around the world has increased manifold over the last few years. But as long as you take the above steps, you can significantly decrease your chances of becoming a victim of such crimes. Crimes. Additionally, if you are the victim of financial fraud, do report such crimes to the appropriate authorities so that there is some chance that the fraudsters are caught and you are able to recover the money you have lost. So, thank you guys for joining with us for this podcast. If you want to read full article about it then the link of the article is in description. Also you can subscribe to our YouTube channel Monist View. Over here Shubham from Monist View signing off.